So our planning area uh, is in Massachusetts state waters, uh, which uh, includes uh, all of state waters up to a line, a near shore line that was created uh, in the statute uh, which enabled ocean planning in Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Ocean uh, Act of 2008. So it's about uh, a third of a nautical mile um, from uh, mean high water. In Massachusetts, um, sustaining stakeholder uh, involvement really means uh, ocean planning for us. Uh, they are synonymous. I've got three examples. There are, there are many more, um, but uh, I'll provide these as um, sort of a touchstone for um, some examples in Massachusetts. Um, the first really is um, the technical work groups um, that uh, we rely on uh, to form the sort of information base for our ocean plan. Uh, so we have uh, over a hundred uh, science, uh, technical, subject matter, stakeholder experts on six different uh, working groups. Habitat, commercial fishery, shipping and navigation, recreation and cultural energy, um, uh, sediment resources. These people on these work groups uh, are bringing to us and helping us uh, review and verify uh, the best available spatial, da spatial data, um, but really other really important contextual information on which uh, we base a lot of the plan uh, and the management structure of our plan and the ongoing evolution and adaptive nature of our plan. The second ex example is um, really issue specific uh, engagement. So from our 2008 uh, Oceans Act, which our state legislature passed uh, requiring the development of an integrated ocean management plan, uh, we did release our first plan in 2009. Um, it was an intensive effort. Um, there was a tremendous amount of data, uh, of uh, stakeholder input. Um, one of the gaps we had in that plan um, was really poor handle on spatial patterns of recreational boating. But recreational boating is them on the water, uh, boating, fishing, wildlife watching, diving, swimming. Um, it's really, really, really important. So uh, we identified it as a priority um, science and data gap. Uh, and in 2010, uh, with a number of different partners, uh, we went and developed a um, statistically robust um, survey uh, to get a better handle on not only recreational boating patterns, uh, but uh, economics, um, uh, timing and duration of trips, what they're doing out there, so on and so forth, um, and really got back a very uh, significant amount of really high quality information. Uh, we felt really, really good about it. So we're starting to compile some draft maps and we're doing outreach. Um, and one of our key stakeholders in the Commonwealth is the Massachusetts Marine Trades Association. So we're sitting down with folks from MMTA, the Trades Association, and their harbor masters and their marina operators and owners and folks uh, who are just in the boating business. And we're looking at these maps and we're starting to get some feedback from them and actually pretty significant con concern from them that the maps that we're showing, which are you know, science-driven, statistically-based uh, representation of spatial patterns, uh, are missing some important customary boating corridors, uh, some areas. So we hit the pause button and we said, okay, um, how can we solve this? Um, we asked them to do their own expert-based survey. Uh, so they put uh, roots on maps uh, a number of different regions in Massachusetts, as several different sort of boating workshops and stuff like that, aggregated all those maps and sent them back into uh, our agencies, to CZM. We took the time to uh, digitize each and every one of those routes, and we treated those like they were part of the survey. So we ended up integrating both the you know, statistically robust uh, science design uh, versus this stakeholder input design, and we created what we feel is really the best uh, recreational boating map. Um, and they uh, reviewed the final product, uh, and we've heard, you know, we have heard nothing but um, widespread, yes, this, this seems to uh, sort of get that right. Uh, so that was really important to us. Um, it meant that we had to um, take a couple steps back, um, but I think the commitment to substantive work with the stakeholder really um, lends itself to a more productive outcome in the end. And my third example is, um, really important to have a sort of a, some continuity uh, through the whole process. And our Oceans Acts creates uh, two standing formal advisory bodies for us, the Ocean Advisory Commission and our Ocean Science uh, Council. 
Advisory Council. So these are uh, experts uh, from different uh, aspects in, in Massachusetts um, on the uh, Advisory Commission. Um, it's folks from the region, it's folks from commercial fishing, it's folks from the energy sector, uh, it's folks from the environmental interests on the Science Council, it's academia, it's federal and state agencies, uh, it's NGOs and others. So with these groups, uh, we can meet on a more uh, routine basis, quarterly, uh, roughly, um, and these guys have a, a very current and in-depth knowledge of the ocean plan, uh, what the ocean plan is seeking to do, and can really provide its very informed uh, input, guidance, feedback, and those two touchstones are critically important too. So one of our concerns uh, as we've been uh, going through this process for, for years now is uh, stakeholder, uh, I guess we call it stakeholder burnout, um, and stakeholder bandwidth. So in burnout, um, you're asking uh, individuals uh, to commit to, you know, in the case of our, say, our Ocean Science Council, quarterly meetings with sometimes some significant homework between meetings on a, you know, year to year to year basis. Um, and that is really difficult to sustain for someone who is not their job to you know, provide that service. So we address that in part by uh, rotating individuals, um, but you know, it, is a, it is a concern that we have. And we've seen cases where people simply say, you know, can't do it anymore. Uh, and that gets to this sort of similar uh, parallel concern, which is bandwidth. You know, I don't know if they're one and the same, but between uh, the activities that we have in the Northeast alone, so we have Massachusetts and we have Rhode Island, uh, and now we have Connecticut uh, engaging in their planning effort. They're being asked to not only do Massachusetts, but you know, do Rhode Island, do the Northeast uh, regional ocean planning effort. So there is a very real bandwidth issue. Um, and then the last concern we have is really attracting the engagement and input of uh, folks, you know, who I'd say sort of beyond our usual suspects. Um, and that's really been a challenge for us. I and mean, I'm very uh, interested in, in, in learning and exploring ways to, to broaden our, our reach and our engagement.